Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be continuing work on our Boland's Tube Frame PTO project. Now, in the last video on this project, uh, we stripped it all down and ended the video by saying uh, that we would clean everything up and come back to you. Now everything is cleaned up and it looks a lot better. And today we're going to be focusing on making up a new uh, nylon seal washer. Before we start on the seal washer, just something that we noticed while we were cleaning this PTO up is this horrible kind of indented part on there, which shouldn't be there by the way. We think that is from when the bearings would have gone in the other end, that shaft would have been flailing about everywhere. We think this circlet kind of uh, dug into there, the radius of that circle uh, kind of matches the outside of that circlet, so that kind of uh, might confirm our theory partly, but with that kind of spinning around all in there That's kind of taken the material down quite badly And that's something we're going to have to combat or counter when it comes to putting the new bearing and oil seal in there However, that is uh, not today's problem. Today we are focusing on the seal washers Which are a very difficult uh, kind of shape to make however, we've bought a stick of nylon and we are going to try machining this into these uh, washers. And we were actually advised that we should have probably gotten some Delrin instead, because apparently nylon uh, is well known for being difficult to machine with. However, we're gonna give it a go anyway, since that's all we've got at the moment, and see how far we get towards one of these. We're over by the lathe now, and we have the nylon in the chuck. Uh, now, from our research, I think high-speed steel is meant to be better for tool, better tool-wise than uh, carbide bits for cutting nylon. So that's what we've got in the tool post at the moment. Now, another thing we saw in our research was that apparently nylon is meant to be cut at quite high speed. Uh, now we did try that on a test piece earlier, and it kind of melted it more than it cut it. So we've kind of turned. Uh, the speed back again for the cut we're about to do but we'll see how this fares with this speed Then I was going quite slowly and that's given a pretty nice smooth finish on there uh, Which is quite good. I'm not fully sure how much you can see on camera because obviously it's just white with the LED Doesn't really show you too much But the next thing to do uh, with this is to drill the three-quarter hole in the middle And we've got a three-quarter drill bit in the tailstock here So we just need to wind that in uh, enough to get one or two of those out of it so i'll do that now
the drilling of the hole through the center went quite well and that was kind of the easy bit over because after that we had to cut the 20 degree angle on the front of here or 70 degrees depending on uh, kind of what way you look at it now this took us absolutely ages mainly because we were struggling to work out how we were actually going to get that angle cut on there took so long that me and dad were completely stumped really and in the end we phoned a friend uh, Malcolm who helped us in kind of working out where we had to put the compound uh, to get the right angle on there so thank you very much Malcolm and that is at kind of 20 degrees uh, on this side I believe or 70 degrees as I said as you can see on there and we took that 20 degree angle all the way down to the hole in the center which some of you might be saying well hang on there's a flat face on there that you've forgotten to put on which I'm not fully sure if you can see that or not and we will be putting that flat flat face on next uh, so effectively we'll just go we'll put this compound back to 90 degrees and just go across um, with the bit of tooling on there just to create a flat face on there to the uh, kind of size that we want we didn't do that while we were doing the angle because it was difficult enough as it was and we were struggling enough as it was so we thought we'd complicate it a little less now you may have noticed I've been kind of holding our high speed steel tooling here and that's because of the angles that this is uh, at make it perfect for doing what we used it for earlier but for the this angled part we had to go back to our um, carbide tooling but we did that and it's left a decent finish so we're now going to switch back and do the face on the front now the flat face on the front of this is about one and one eighth of an inch 1.125 uh, so that's what we're going to aim for now we're not going to try and do this like scientifically in one go we're just going to take some material off and keep checking against this existing washer until we get what we want so I'll just put these down out of the way and we are now ready to start machining this Now it's time to start cutting the part on the back of this washer and for that we've got a parting tool in the lathe here and we've got it set up we think to the right thickness so that we can just go in there and not go the whole way through but just go in enough to create this step and then after that we can move along and go all the way through. Now when it comes to making this step again we're not going to be too scientific with it we're going to go in a bit measure it in a bit measure it and just keep going until we have that with the correct gap between uh, kind of the step part and the outside and then we can move it over uh, by the thickness and go all the way through but one step at a time uh, let's start going in with this and see where that takes us final lathing process and we've moved our parting tool further along so that we can cut off uh, the washer part from the rest of the nylon that is in the lathe and we've got something in the tailstock to catch it when it comes flying off now we've done all of the spacing and measuring so let's get cutting
and there we are by the looks of it. Uh, right, seemingly got quite hot, however, that is our wash part separated. We've finished cleaning up our nylon washer now and we've got it sitting next to uh, the original one here. I don't think we've done too badly uh, shape and finish wise, to be honest. They look pretty similar, so we're quite happy with that. And that will, of course, go just on the inside of here, sitting on the end. I'm not going to put it on there because I'm worried I might lose it in there and have to try and scrape it out. But yeah, that fits just on the end of there. Doesn't actually get pushed in, it just kind of sits on the end like an end cap, almost. But something we have now done is we've ordered some Delrin, so we can have a play about with trying to machine that. Uh, as we said at the start of the video, that's meant to be easier than nylon. However, even with nylon being quite difficult, we still managed to make uh, this out of the materials that we had. So that is pretty good going in my mind. And this will get assembled with all the other bearings and oil seal uh, that need to go onto this PTO to get it working again. But that's a job for another day. And that is the end of this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.